Thursday Hello. is in the house. Well, so you're half in the house. I'm half in the house. What's I'm, up, Phil? I've got, I've got, I've, I'm ill, Chris. I'm ill. I'm it's not ill, well, Glenister. I'm not a well boy. I'm feeling very sorry for myself, and it's January, and it's just awful. But you do look full of a cold. Yeah. No, I just, it just suddenly came at the weekend. I know a lot of people have had it. Maybe it's changing the temperature yeah. or whatever's going on. But it just suddenly got me at the weekend, and it's just, I can't clear it. It's just that cough, you know? Yeah. You know that thing where you just cough all night and mm. things? And so every time now, the whole sort of stomach muscles go, ah, yeah. everything aches, everything aches. But listen, thanks for coming in, because you really didn't need to, and you do genuinely look like you're full of mucus and full of a cold. And um, yeah. So thanks for, thanks for bothering, mate. That's all right, mate. Oh, uh, listen, I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly... Uh, but straight after this, you back off to bed, I reckon. Yeah, defo. Yeah, straight. defo. Like, I bought my thingy as well. Just to cover up. You snood. I got snood on. Yeah, snood. I got snood on today. Keep the snood. Keep I got snood on today because it's so cold on the bike on the way in today. Oh, God, don't. So, Phil, here we go. After the flood, yes. ITV tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, yeah. episode one of six begins tomorrow, 9 pm, ITV, Wednesday, the 10th of Jan. Here's mm. the thing we all watched episode one last night. You're not in it. Hardly. <laughs> well, like, there's for one two line. Seconds. There's yeah. one line. Um, so That's I what watched, appealed about it. I watched episode two during the show today. You're definitely in that. So <laughs> oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it. No, you straight off the bat in this in episode two. Oh, good. So after the flood, um, auspicious, isn't it? Serendipitous because we have floody hell where I'm living now. Yes. Not as bad as where some people have, but it's pretty bad. I mean. Yeah. There's 60 houses one road from me that are inaccessible at the moment, in or out, and all the people there. I mean, the houses aren't flooded, but the road is. It's closed, properly, properly mm. closed. Tell us about your flood in this show, and um, then what, how come there's, there's a mystery going on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it, it kicks straight in, which is which is great. With the first one, we suddenly see it's right in, you know, no, no messing around. There's a flood and this river burst its banks and it's torrential and it's all going off. Um, and basically, um, the, it's, yeah, it's a murder mystery thriller. And it's one of those things, you you know, you you, you come to promote the show and you can't really say anything. <laughs> so anyway, it's nice seeing you guys. I'm going back to bed. Enjoy the show. Six weeks. Um, no, so you know what I mean? So it's all these spoilers. So basically, it's um, it's sort of set in the north of England, uh, as I Yorkshire. said. Yorkshire. Right? Oh, your, well, sort of the Peak, peak District, right. yorkshire sort of way. Uh, we filmed, actually, in the Peak District, right near Glossop. Got it. Glossop, which is lovely, actually. Um, and basically, my character, Jack, is uh, Jack Radcliffe, is a sort of big fish in a small pond. He's kind of like he's a property developer, and he's developing this, this thing called the Uplands, which is uh, an eco-development um, to, to basically get some flood defences in because this place keeps getting flooded. Um, and there's some shenanigans being, you know, being a businessman, obviously, uh, particularly with a character called Sarah Mackey, who's a would-be MP. She's a councillor, but she wants to sort of... She's ambitious and she yeah, wants yeah. to go to the top. So they're working with each other quite nicely. You do me a favour, I'll do you a favour. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then there's... You know, Jack, like everybody else, he has a past. And so they're all kind of um, implemented in this in, in many respects. They're all suspects. But you just have to wait, you know, and see... Who um who actually? Yeah, I'm glad it. you said that we couldn't. You you um red flagged the spoilers. I mean, we could just talk about the the principal characters, which you've begun to do there, and then we can't really say much else. Um, mm. We could <laughs> stick stick a record on Chris. Yeah. Yay. Hey everyone. And they're Let's all put, very relatable. Put Supper's Ready on by Genesis. Go on. That goes on for they're about two weeks. We just played Genesis now. Oh yeah. Because you've got your main your main policewoman Joanna. She's pregnant. Yes. And you're trying to work out what Sophie there's, Rundle. There's, Sophie. Yeah, is there, it's brilliant. You know, there's there's her relationship with her husband. There's some in law sort of friction. Yes. Then there's her relationship with her mum. Yeah. So there's lots there for everybody Molly. to get into. There's a relationship that everybody can sort of relate oh, to. Oh yeah. yeah. It's that very much that sort of small town yeah and everybody well. knows everybody each other. knows your business yeah you know i mean everybody knows each other um you know in terms of backstories although we don't sort of talk about them as such as definitely jack is somebody that i think was was born and bred in the town along with molly and some of the others so they've all got a past yeah you know but i can't sort of Say too much because it's funny though, not to. There's this. What's this? Spoilers. You can't. You spoil it. You rotten thing. But the thing is about living in a village, as I've done, um, and mm. uh, maybe other people uh, around and on microphones currently have done, is it's brilliant to live in a village because it's a close knit community. But therefore, uh, go. Everybody knows each other's business. Exactly. And sometimes. Um, 
you know, you can be isolated yet in community to the extent that you want, you have no choice but to air your dirty linen in yeah, public. public. And there's a bit of that going on as well, isn't there? There's a, the mm. disgruntled partners, you know. I mean, it's not great, is it, when your partner doesn't know how pregnant you are yeah, for a start? Yeah. Th there's that. That doesn't land very well, does no, it? No, that's true. That doesn't turn there. up to scans. No. <laughs> He would do that. <laughs> do you know what I really enjoyed? Come on. And, and, all I of mean, it. I enjoy, Hopefully I, all of it. I enjoyed everything I was meant to enjoy. Yes, but because the link Good that save. I was sent was a, a, a sort of early, unedited, unvoiced uh, over bits. Right. I didn't know how much work goes into something like this. So... Mm. I got sent things like, oh, there's a bit of there's a bit of dialogue missing there. Put in some effects here. Every computer screen was mm. this is what's going to be on the computer screen when it goes out on ITV. Yeah, and you know some some of the you so know. So you thought it's all filmed on a phone then? Basically, I just thought once it's filmed, it's filmed. I didn't yeah. realise how much sort of post production <laughs> post goes into these. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, well done. You all work very hard. Well, as a well, well I, done I, television. I mean, <laughs> no, well, us actors don't. Well, once we're done, we you know we're we're off. You know, off, off to, to, off to find get the cold. next <laughs> off to get a cold and find the next gig. Um, so it's the director who sort of then got another kind of four or five months of, of post-production of editing yeah. with the producers and you know then we go back into the booth to, to put in a, what we call ADR you know where you, where you fill is that in audio the dub replacement is that what yeah. that means I've yeah. always thought it means that but I'm not yeah, quite sure audio dub replacement right. it sounds good to me yeah. I just say ADR. I'm not sure it does mean that. So I, know, I, so I know what I'm talking about. It's going to the studio, then you just sort of revoice. You get this little line that goes across. You go, beep, beep, beep. You know, then you come in. Do you know with the what um, it's a rap means? Yeah. Go on. Well, it's a rap. Yeah. It means the end of the shoot. Done. But you finished. know what rap stands for? What? W R A P. W R A P. Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah. What? Wind, reel, and print. Wind, reel, and print. That's what it's a rap means. I knew that, Chris. Don't embarrass me in front of you know everybody. Your, your it's listeners. a rap. Wind the it's reel a, and print. Yes, it. wind the reel. Send it off to the lab. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't do that now because we don't shoot on film anymore. I know. So you know, they used to have the old hair in the gate. Remember the hair in the Tell gate? Tell us about the hair in the gate. The hair in the gate was when you had a little line in the camera in the film, and you'd you know look at it, and they would check it through the lens, and they'd see there's a little crack, like a hairline fracture or something. So you'd have to go again, shoot again. Yeah, amazing. Isn't amazing, it? isn't it? And is it true that um, in cinema, when they were changing reels, there'd be a little circle at the top of the screen, which told the projectionist that it was time to change the reel and you better oh, put right. his back yeah, out yeah, and yeah. get on with it? Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? It's great. Oh, I love, I it, love all. it. Old fashioned stuff. So, so, how much water was. I mean, the thing about the, the, the reason, you know, the flood, there's the yeah. mystery, there's the things we can't talk about. We literally can't talk about what happens in the beginning mm. um, and what they find because it'll. it'll it's begin to ruin um, whatever kind of jigsaw puzzle you enjoy putting together at home mm. when you watch a, a murder mystery. If there's a murder at all! Mm. Anyway. Um, but if there's a flood, it extenuates everybody's emotions. Yeah. It makes better people better. It makes worse people worse. A bit like mm. the internet. Yes. Well, I mean, what's amazing, I mean, you talk about the, the set and everything. We They built this incredible set. Basically, they built a tank. A where, huge where, where, tank. Where was this? The, the, uh, the Trafford Centre car park. Right. I don't even know if they told them, actually, but, they, you know. I think they would have had to, <laughs> wouldn't they? Well, I don't know. I mean, you just sort of like... We're down that? 60 spaces, it's shoppers. Look, yeah. Why? Oh, Glenister like and his like in. A, a, it sort of looked like a mini old Trafford or something. I don't know. But they built this tank and then they built a street inside this tank and then filled it with water. Oh, yeah. Incredible. At one point, at one point, there's a wide shot of the street. Right. But they haven't done the rest of the town. No, So it looks right. like it's just... <laughs> Well, no, they, in the they, right. they when did you neck in? When did you last make a TV show? It's great. Yeah, it's telly, love. We're yes, not, I know. I loved it. It's not budget. Oppenheimer, mate. I, I'm not complaining. I loved it. No, I you're not complaining, but you're throwing stones. <laughs> I'm not throwing stones at all. This yeah, is mate. all great stuff. This I think, is great I think they built it for something like 350 grand. Now, if you'd done that for Netflix or in America, that would have been 15 million probably yeah. to do I that. Think, I, think so, I think it looks incredible. It does. It looks amazing. Yeah. It does. I'm glad you agree. Finally, <laughs> got him across the line. What's wrong with the guy? Excuse me. Is that a sympathy cough or is that a real cough? It's a real cough. Okay. What is this? You've this is a Mark's teeny. A Mark's teeny. Richard Marks came. In. You know Richard Marks? Oh yeah, 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 the singer. Yeah, so he came in and he recommended this, and it, I have one every day, and it really sorts me out. It's a lot of ginger. There's a bit of ginger. There's a bit of lemon. There's a bit of honey. A bit of pond life. Cayenne pepper, and oh, some cayenne, water. That was it. Sort you right out that will, mate. Yeah, one old, of those, one or two of those. Good old Dicky. That with a bit Dickie of electrolyte. But do you, you take your electrolytes? What's that? That. Uh, Electrolyte. So sounds you, like something you plug in. 
yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> it's stuff you put in water to mean it means that oh, your yeah. your blood is going to absorb the hydration because sometimes at our age especially, yeah, we over we hydrate, we don't overhydrate, but it feels like we do because we don't retain the water, we just pee out, which means we go to bed thirsty and unable to stop peeing, which is yes. sort of unfair. Yeah. So if you have your electrolytes in the day, it should sort you out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll try it. I'm going to keep saying after the flood, episode one of six begins tomorrow. It's really good. 9 p.m. ITV, <laughs> Wednesday, 10th of Jan. We're going to keep saying that. Yes. Uh, because we're not allowed to say anything more about it other than when it's on, uh, what channel it's on. And that Fat Philip and some other brilliant people are in it. And there's lots of people yeah. who are very talented behind the scenes who've done things that Vassas could never possibly appreciate or even <laughs> conceive of. It's very clever. Um, <laughs> clever, they're those all people. marvellous. They're all yeah. very clever. Can we just talk about life on Mars? Can we talk about yes. vinyl today? Yes. And, and, you know, the fact that if you get vinyl in your life, back in your life now, it's like a time machine, but it was always mm. like a spaceship anyway. Yeah. Because even in back in the day, it used to transport you to another world, another, yeah. another whole uh, sort of uh, cosmic... Um, entity it was amazing so now it's a time machine and it's still that as well mm. so isn't it brilliant and all i'm thinking is hang on a minute vinyl's back in our lives life on mars ashes to ashes that was back they unbelievably successful still talked about mm. but such such a brief run for both the shows yeah and then taken up around the world not only rebroadcast as you made them you and your brilliant pals then yes. but also Russian versions made, Chinese version made, Korean version made yeah. of, of Life on Mars. Can't we? What do you think? Is it any whispers of it coming back here? No, uh, I oh, think not. That was afraid. emphatic, emphatic. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is that then? Well, because um, I know that Matthew and, and Ashley had written um, a kind of a, a, a sequel to it called Lazarus, which is obviously named after dear uh, Bowie's last album. Yeah. Um, and there was talk that uh, a couple of production companies were going to pick it up. It was a good script. John and I had read it. Um, but unfortunately, for whatever reasons, I think it was financial as opposed to creative, uh, it was deemed um, that it wasn't going to happen. So I think, you know, rather than keep sort of, you know, trying to bring something back. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. You know, I think... I just as a fan, I'm being selfish. Yeah, no, I, no absolutely. But, I, you know, for me, it was a bit of a mixed blessing, I guess, because um, as much as I... I mean, it was a, I mean, it was a you know, it was a career changer. It was a game changer as a, as a show for, for all of us. Um, excuse me. <coughs> but it's also, you know, we've all sort of moved on. No, no, I, think. I know. Do you know, know what I mean? People talk to, about, to, to me about stuff that I've done. I'm just yeah. like, I can't think why I'd want to do that. And everybody says, yeah. it's like Oasis, isn't it? You can see why Noel Gallagher doesn't want to go back and do Oasis again. No, absolutely. Yeah, and and we don't get it. Well, why wouldn't he want to have all that fun? Well, because he had all the fun and it wouldn't be the same kind of fun. Exactly. And also, I, I think for me personally, um, you know, it was, it was as, as I said, it was a game changer. It was a career changer. It was brilliant. But I did sort of begin to get pigeonholed by it. Right. You know, not by the public, but by... The industry yeah. by producers who just suddenly, you know, I couldn't. Nobody would give me a job as a as a as a detective again because yeah. they, I was so associated with that character that they, you know, anything that came up would be like, oh no no no, he's Gene Hunt, forget it, you know, yeah. go with some, some somebody else. Do you know, which is kind of you know that when we make a lot of procedural drama in this country, so there was a lot of jobs that I wasn't getting because of that association in in that respect. So hopefully it's been. I mean, I just did uh, Steel Town Murders in Wales last year, not last year, the year before. God, yeah. where does the time go? Um, <laughs> and that was the first detective I've played since yeah. Gene Hunt. It's funny, Ashes. isn't it? Because for yeah. us, it's ever present. But for you, yeah. you know, it's like it's, it's like Mike Myers, isn't it? And, and Austin Powers. Yeah. For us, you know, not anymore because he doesn't make them anymore. Mm. But for us, those movies were ever present because we watched them every couple of months or somebody we knew watched them every couple of months or we watched one for a while and then you know the year later we went back to the first one but for him they took five years to make every yeah. time we forget that as, as punters don't and, we and also because you know because he was such a, a a strong character it's not like I always said it was a bit like you know with Doctor Who or James Bond you know you you do your stint and then somebody takes over yeah yeah and you Doctor Who you get a new James Bond but you know which is helpful for you but that yeah, wasn't the case here but it wasn't the case here so that you know other than unless you're <laughs> unless you've been watching the Russian life on Mars and you get a Russian Gene Have Hunt, you seen any of the others? No, I saw some of the American one. Any good? Mm, Just be honest. No. Okay. No. The Korean one I'm intrigued in, because Korea really know how to make... I imagine the Korean one would be pretty groovy. Well, it's, it's, it's been on for a couple a of years. Of, I imagine Gene Hunt might be a bit of a kickboxer. Well, you know they're cracking I mean? on with it. So they're, It's in the fourth season, apparently. Really? Yeah, so like... Wow. I know. 
Um, it's like what happened with The Office, isn't it? Because Ricky Gervais wrote and Stephen Merchant wrote 12, I think, or something like the two episode, two series of six. Yeah, and America so made happened. 10 seasons of 22 or something no. like that. Wow. Some, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the problem with the American one, originally when they did it, um, it was... Um, Oh, I forgot his name. Um, uh, David E. Kelly, I yeah. think, was the producer who was married to yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Corny uh, Cox. No, 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 uh, no um, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. And then he bought the rights, I think, to Life of Mars. But then they sort of set it in in L.A. in the seventies. Now, you know, L.A. in the seventies is where everybody wanted to be: the yeah. Sunshine State, groovy, Wasn't you know, bleak. hanging out, Malibu Beach. Yeah. Whereas the whole point of life, should, you know, it needs a blue collar sort of town. It should have been set in Pittsburgh. Or, yeah. You know. Escapism is required. Yes, exactly. So that's the first thing they got wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can feel there's a long list. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, okay. Number so one. No, so don't watch the American version. And then, well, then they did, then they did re, rehash it. Um, and then they did it back in, in New York with yeah. Harvey Keitel, who played Gene Hunt. Because there was this very funny story where... Um, I was on holiday. I was in the Channel Islands, and I had no idea that Harvey Keitel was taking over playing Gene Hunt. And and so I get this phone call from the head of Kudos, Stephen, who, who who rings me out out of the blue and says, "Oh, Phil, just to say, I'm just ringing from New York. We've got the read through for Life on Mars." And I'm like, "Ooh, should I be there?" <laughs> I'm like, "You know, I'm, yeah. I'm in Alderney. I'm in the Channel Islands. I'm available. I'm, I'm having a I'm having a sundowner. You know." <laughs> and um, he said, "No, it's just to say uh, we, we're doing the read through, and we've uh, got Harvey Keitel." And I'm like, "Sorry, I, I've no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Nobody's told me anything." Yeah. And he said, "No, Harvey Keitel's playing Gene Hunt in the America." I said, "Oh, is he? Oh, that's nice for him. Yeah. Lovely." And he said, "Anyway, he just wants to sort of have a chat with you after the read through." I was like, "Does he? <laughs> oh, okay." <laughs> All right, so uh, so anyway, they did the read. Uh, called back at about, I was saying to you know my my pals and friends and everything, the family say, I'm going to get a call from Harvey Keitel in a minute. Just, you know, carry on with the G and T's, pull me another. Phone goes, I was like, excuse me, it's Harvey. <laughs> Go over the thing, and it's Harvey Keitel on the end of the phone. And he's like, oh, I, just, I, I won't sort of say because he swore quite a bit, but he was just like, I just want you to know, man, I, uh, this is a great show. You, you're amazing. And, and I don't know how I'm going to follow you, man. I have no idea how I'm going to follow you. I was like, well, you'll be fine. You'll have a guy tell love. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You'll be absolutely fine. Um, and then he, 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 and he said to me, he said, you know, I'm, I'm doing one thing. I'm wearing the brogues. Okay, I got the white, the, the brogues that like you wore. I'm going to wear those. It's a tribute to you, my friend. A tribute to you. And I was like, oh, it's very nice of you, Harvey. <laughs> and you got the bar. And then they named the bar after me called Glenister's. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's amazing. They blew it up, but I mean, they named it Did after you me. Did you watch it? Did you I see the bros? Some of it, yeah. Did the bros get his yeah, shot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the bros got his shot. Come on. Definitely. So that was quite Good fun. Good chat, man. Um, yeah. Did you nick anything from the set? Were you gifted anything from the. From... Um, ashes to ashes. I. Um, I got my boots, my cowboy boots, mm. but no, we had we, apparently we had one of the one of the supporting artists, extra whatever you, you know. Apparently they put stuff up. So he, he he bought a load of my stuff. He nicked a load of my my, well, my he bought suits. It. He bought it. Well, I don't know actually. But you didn't know about the sale. No. It was convenient. Nobody tells me anything. Covert sale. Exactly. It's outrageous. Um, I mean, you know, they also yeah. they they blew up one of the Audi Quattro's some ashes, I and then know. I went for a meeting. That at should Kudos. be against the law, by the way. I know. Well, I think I think the writers have got bits of it in their gardens. Um, you know, and then I went to Kudos, who the production company made it, and there's a big door from the Audi on the wall, and I went, I wonder where my bloody car had got to. <laughs> I think you'll find that's mine. <laughs> So I know, yeah. Oh, Phil, we're almost out of time. Oh. L- I know, seriously. Um, we could we have any talk about RSA. We were talking about vinyl earlier on. Oh, yeah. I didn't realise you worked for a record company. Yeah. And I didn't really, I didn't know that RSA, I know I've heard of RSA. I think I've worked with RSA, but I didn't realise. It was a little ox. Red yeah, but I didn't realise it standed for the Robert Stigwood organisation. I didn't know that. Yeah. Jeez. I know. They had these very, very flash offices. And so you've got some old, old good old white label at home. Yeah, yeah, because because it was a record company, so I've got all these old vinyl albums. I've got quite a lot of Genesis ones actually. With you know, for publicity purposes only. Does yeah, that yeah. make them more exclusive? For promotional co- for promotional use yeah. only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, massively. I've got more about exclusive. three copies of Three Sides Live, which wow. is like nineteen eighty, eighty one. White labels are worth it. the right ones are worth an absolute yeah. fortune. Yeah, and I was saying uh, earlier I've got this one which is like disco fever and all that. And only recently I sort of was going through stuff and I came through this one, this sort of disco fever, all these songs, and I've got this there's this beautiful untouched poster of Boney M. Who would have thought? <laughs> is it what have you done with it? 
Tagging in the bathroom. It's no, it's a, not. No, I'll put it a, back. I'll put it's it back. A, the, cool, the, the posters that came with them, the gatefold posters, I know. used to unfold them so carefully. And the big That's thing right. was, how big is it going to be? Because yes. you never knew it was going to be a, a disappointingly small one, which was still big, or a gigantic one, that, which yeah. your mum and dad would have to help you to unfold. Otherwise, you'd definitely rip it on the well, first So unfold. you had something, you know, when you open the album, especially if it was a double album. Oh, don't, it's going to be all. And oh. you, you know, you'd have photographs, you'd have just sleeve just notes. I know, you'd have all these the sleeve best, notes. Man. And you'd put. And you'd Remember, they take the record out and very carefully so to make sure you wouldn't it. touch the grooves. Stop it. And then, you know, and you go, blow it. Stop it now. Stop it. I'm there. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Phil, we are definitely out of time. You've got to get back to bed, mate. I have, yeah. So after the interview, um, it's under the duvets and after the interview, but after the flood, episode one of six begins tomorrow, Wednesday, 10th, 10th of Jan, 9 p.m. ITV. We all loved it. Fastest appreciated bits of it. <laughs> I loved it. Cheers, Vessel. Radio.